Looks All like right. it's working. I see it. Mm -hmm. I believe we are recording. We are recording. Okay, fantastic. Well, welcome again, everyone, to a little spin, a uh, Fertility for Color Girl spin on Monday Motivation called Monday Fertility Motivation. Tonight, we are talking about the power of acupuncture um, featuring Christine Davis of Pulling Down the Moon, which is um, a wonderful partner of Fertility for Color Girls, a longtime partner um, of this organization. I'll tell you a little bit about Christine Christine, and then I'll let her get right to it since uh, we only have about 30 minutes tonight. She is a licensed acupuncturist and acupuncture director at Pulling Down the Moon. She focuses on helping people achieve maximum lasting wellness by giving, by giving them the tools to heal themselves. She believes that health can be improved by using traditional methods of moderation and balance. And we are so excited to have you here tonight, Christine. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, I think um, acupuncture and fertility are so connected in my mind. And um, so I'm so glad to be here and talk to your audience a little bit about what we do at Pulling Down the Moon and what I do as an acupuncturist. Sounds great. Well, first, uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself and your extensive background in this field. Sure, so I've been practicing for about 15 years in the Chicago area. And I've always treated fertility, but I joined Pulling Down the Moon about four and a half years ago or so um, to focus pretty much exclusively on fertility. Um, it's, I think, a, a field of uh, a part of Chinese medicine. Um, Chinese medicine has been around in continuous usage for about 5,000 years that we know of, and in its current form, at least 2,500 years. And that includes acupuncture, herbology, and then some other associated techniques. And wow. you know, if you think about what was important to people that long ago, you know, keeping a roof over your head, um, getting enough to eat, and and pro procreation. And so, because of that, um, there is a substantial wealth of knowledge about women's health, about men's health, and as it pertains specifically to procreation. And so we have many different tools that we use um, to help people achieve wellness and thereby um, natural fertility. And so this is something that was um, really dear to me personally. I um, uh, struggled with fertility myself for some time before um, having my own kids. I have a seven and 10 year old girls now, so I'm very lucky. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I've just been amazed by the power of this medicine ever since I started. Um, when I first started out, it was I was I had been studying some um, Chinese martial art for some time, and uh, a lot of the theory is embedded within that, and uh, was fascinated by it. And then uh, was in a car accident. It could have been a lot worse. I was riding a bicycle, and um, but it, you know through my process of healing, discovered reflexology which is um, a, a branch of Chinese medicines, you know, addressing feet or hands or other areas of the body to create balance. Um, mm -hmm. And I was uh, picked up a book on it and was able to um, get rid of friends, allergies and back pain and headaches and things wow. like that. So I was fascinated by that and um, ended up going to the Midwest College of Oriental Medicine, um, studied there for some time, went to the Beijing University of Traditional Chinese Medicine, um, and then I completed my master's degree in Oriental Medicine uh, at Midwest College of Oriental Medicine and um, have been practicing since then. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's just an amazing thing to see people um, become their best selves by um, finding tools that they can use in their own lives to create wellness. And, and I can support that. Um, but really, most of what I do is educating. In fact, they say in Chinese medicine that uh, the, the good doctor treats a healthy patient. And that means that we, we work on helping you to find your own balance and your own path to wellness rather than trying to fix you through, you know, our own methods. Wow. So it sounds like uh, more like being, being proactive and not just seeking out um, treatment uh, once you once you understand that there's an issue but seeing how you can maybe uh, be proactive in trying to address uh, some of those issues and and get balanced beforehand absolutely and you know I think in our culture we just have this proclivity to 
to want someone to fix us, right? We have a problem and we want to go to someone and they can tell us what to do and then we're just gonna be better. And sometimes that happens, right? Sometimes we find like this is the right thing and the right treatment right away. But a lot of times it, there's a journey and, and what works for one person doesn't work for everyone. And so, um, you know, it becomes really important to know your own body and to become more connected to it and aware of it. And that is something that we find through Chinese medicine, particularly through acupuncture, that there is um, this, this creation of awareness and connectivity to the body. Uh, I don't know if you've ever, have you ever had acupuncture before? I have not, and I'd actually just want you to tell us just a little bit of, more about the process of it, because yeah. I'm, I'm sure like a lot of people, I just know what I've seen on TV, right? Sure, so with, sure, so, right, yeah. <laughs> tell us a little bit more about that. Absolutely. Um, so a typical acupuncture session, your first visit, you're going to come in, we're going to ask a whole lot of questions. There's a pretty long questionnaire that we have you fill out ahead of time. Um, about everything, um, certainly for your fertility history, but also your menstrual cycle, um, you know, everything else though too, you know, what's going on with your digestive system, what's happening, do you have any respiratory issues or allergies, um, skin stuff, you know, eyes, nose, everything. We want to know your whole history um, and everything that's going on with you, even your emotional state, because that can always inform um, what's happening, you know, inside the body as well. And so after going through all of that, um, we're also looking at the way that you present yourself, the way that you walk, the way that you hold your body when you sit, when you stand, your complexion, um, the brightness in your eyes. Um, we look then at the tongue and feel the pulse, um, not just on one wrist, but both. And all of those signs and symptoms together are compiled to become your Chinese medicine diagnosis. And so we, we think of it more as a, we actually don't even use the word diagnosis as so much as pattern. So even just that language that right there shows you that we're not trying to um, you know, identify one set thing and saying we're only gonna treat that. It's an ongoing journey to address a pattern, a trend of events that's happened and that's led you to this point in your life and then to create balance within that. Definitely. And Fertility for Colored Girls as an organization does focus on a very holistic approach yes. to, to uh, addressing the issue and, and uh, root causes. And um, as you mentioned, it can be a variety or a combination of things. So absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. So how can acupuncture um, help with fertility treatments or, or how would you say um, it, it could help or would help if, if a woman or family uh, comes to you and says, well, well, how can this help me in, in this journey I'm on right now? Absolutely. So um, I didn't even get to the acupuncture part. I was, I was rambling about our intake. But, but really um, that, that actually helps me to, to bring me to the next point, which is that your acupuncture session itself um, you know, they're to the insertion of very fine pre-sterilized, never reused stainless steel um, points into individual spots in the body. Um, those points are on pathways, we call them channels or meridians. Mm -hmm. There is a higher electromagnetic frequency at each of the acupuncture points. So when we put in this metal, we're literally conducting your body's electricity. So we'll hold that on the shelf for a second. Um, and But you know, you have this acupuncture sessions typically around 30 minutes that you're lying there. And you know, you can shift around a little bit if you need to scratch an itch or shift your leg or something like that. It's not gonna hurt anything. Um, mm -hmm. But you're, you're basically still, you're lying still for 30 minutes. Maybe there's some relaxing music playing. We have warming lamps and things like that. It's a really very relaxing experience. Most people say they felt like they've just had a massage or a nice nap. We call it an acu nap. Um, <laughs> and so you have this, you know, time when maybe you don't have that time any other point in the week, you know, with our busy schedules and our lives and our relationships, and maybe we're already parents to someone else. Um, so there's th all those things, um, you know, you never really have this time unless you find it and grab hold of it to find quiet and serenity when you're awake and you're, mm -hmm. you know, still. And so you have this opportunity to relax and rest and restore. And so they're just, just that by itself, I think, can be really significant. So then on top of that, you know, we have these acupuncture points 
Um, so as we're conducting the body's electricity, we're very, every tissue in the body responds and we do acupuncture. Um, there's a circulatory response, nervous system response, lymphatic, endocrine, I mean, pretty much you name it, some um, aspect of the body is going to be addressed. The acupuncture points are determined, where we place them is determined by that intake, that overall um, you know, pattern evaluation that we um, set up at the beginning. And it changes, you know, as you might imagine, as a, wo a woman goes through her cycle throughout the month, it's gonna look a little bit different from week to week. So we might choose different points, or um, if there's a chance post ovulation that you might be pregnant, we might need to use different points, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that we're trying to you know, I, I think of like the water pipes in your house. You know, if there's a blockage somewhere, then the water is not going to flow to that area. So if we can open up that blockage, then the circulation of that water will flow. And it's the same thing with, we say, um, chi. You've probably heard this term, Q-I-T, or sometimes it's written C-H-I. Um, and it's it's energy, it's activation, it's movement. Um, I also like the image of a candle, you know, so you've got the the uh, wick and then you've got the wax and then you've got the light and the heat that emanate from the, the lighted candle. And that's what she is. It's this activation, this movement, that's warmth and activity that's supposed to be happening in the different organ systems in your body. And when there is not correct functioning, that fire could burn out of control if it's too hot, or maybe the fire is too weak or even extinguished. And then, you know, there's not, there can be cold signs and things not flowing in that way. And so that's what acupuncture attempts to improve is regulating, balancing, and moderating. And so that can also be extended to the hormones. So there's a hormonal response that we'll see as well. So people will see stabilization of hormonal levels, um, which could be contributing to um, issues with fertility as well. There's not a ton of research out there, honestly. There is some, I have some great articles I can send you if you're interested. Um, and research that's been done in the U.S. Um, showing that it can impact specifically IVF cycles. That's a lot of the work with fertility is with IVF cycles. And so we're seeing like double the success rates of an IVF transfer, or specifically with a, for a frozen embryo transfer um, and uh, things like that. But the, the, most of the research that's being done is it been in, in China and sometimes in Europe, and not all of that's embraced by the Western medical community. Um, but it's happening slowly but surely, much like with many other holistic forms of medicine, it's, you know, like pulling teeth, but people are starting to take it seriously because again, it's something that's been around for thousands of years and we do see results from it. Another thing that we'll see, like I say, with that stabilization of hormones, um, you know, when your body is in a state of anxiety and stress, and that could just be from daily life, or it could be from the process of trying to right. conceive, as we know, that can be very stressful. And in fact, people are sometimes even diagnosed with things like post-traumatic stress disorder after going through um, a fertility journey. Wow. And so um, when uh, your body is in that extreme state of stress and anxiety. It's like, you know, you're, you're running from the tiger, quote unquote, right? So right, um, right. if, if we can, when you're in that state, your body is going to put its efforts into keeping yourself alive, your heart, your lungs, you know, that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's not going to put as much focus and energy into your reproductive function. So mm -hmm. it's counterintuitive. It's like you want to say like, oh, just calm down and relax, right? And then right. You, I'm sure we've all heard that, right? Re relax mm -hmm. and, relax. and just let it happen. Yeah. Right, definitely. right. And 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 while far be it from me to you know woman shame in that way and say that it's somehow our fault that we're not pregnant, it's um it, it's there is something to be said for needing to moderate that stress response, mm -hmm. and that's something that acupuncture is very good at that we are engaging the parasympathetic nervous system and helping to soothe it and calm it down and say, you know what, we're not running from a tiger, we're gonna be okay, right. let's calm down, let's focus, let's balance. And then your body can put its efforts. And so over time, and so for somebody who's trying naturally, I say, you know, a minimum of three cycles of regular acupuncture treatment would be a good idea. And by regular treatment, I typically mean once or twice a week, you would want to talk with your practitioner about what's most appropriate for you. Um, 
but to, you will see a stabilization within that time. Doesn't mean we're out of the woods, and especially for more complicated issues like PCOS or endometriosis, it might mean more time with treatment. But absolutely, everybody I've worked with has seen significant change as if they're coming regularly during that time. You can also use it as part of um, an assisted cycle, so whether it's an IUI or an IVF or something like that, um, you can absolutely use it concurrently. There's no downside. We might omit things like um, Chinese herbs when we're doing a medicated cycle. We don't know all the potential interactions with herbs mm -hmm. and um, medicines, and so just to be on the safe side, we just remove that portion, but acupuncture can be very effective with offsetting the side effects of medications and um, now, all that sort of thing. Uh, I also want to make a point that we can work with men. You know, I, I think um, as a culture, we focus so much on women, and we there's this thing that um, it was with, with regards to fertility that that somehow it's the woman's issue. But when we break down the numbers, it turns out that when there are known issues, it's almost a 50-50 split between men and women in terms of where the issue lies. Um, and even so, just that alone is enough for me to say, like, he should be getting in there and receiving treatment right. also. But okay. also, you know, there may be other things that could be impacting his health and stress and that sort of thing. Um, mm -hmm. And so that is something also that acupuncture can be a helpful for. It's very effective. And men's issues often, I'm not saying across the board, but often are easy, easier to treat because, um, you know, if there's things like, um, you know, low sperm count or um, poor motility or something like that. Sometimes nutraceuticals like CoQ10 or zinc or something like that plus acupuncture are enough to resolve the, the problem. And then maybe there doesn't need to be further intervention. With women's issues, sometimes it is more complicated, right? We have to regulate that HPO axis. We've heard that before, hypothalamus, pituitary, mm -hmm. ovarian axis, so that, that function that um, is regulated throughout our menstrual cycle that um, contributes to proper ovulation and so forth. Mm -hmm. And so that is something that can take some time to resolve. But anyway, point being that we, we definitely need to see the men too if, if we can convince them to come in. Okay. Yeah. So it sounds like this can be beneficial for, for everyone involved. Um, do you think that most people know that this is an option? I think you mentioned that that um, it, it is gaining some popularity and there, there are more uh, studies being done on it. But uh, do you think that, that, you know, the majority of people would know about this or, or um, have you, what have just, have you seen when you, when you tell people about these treatments? Sure, and that's a great, great question. Um, I, I do think that people, you know, whether it's through message boards or girlfriends or whatever, they hear about it, you know, and, and, and everybody that I've ever treated has said, you know, I heard about it and I kind of put it on the shelf for a while and I tried other things, but then when it hadn't worked yet, I thought, well, let's give this a try, you know, mm -hmm. and I thought even particularly when it comes to um, things like pain, I've heard, well, I tried everything else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so right. I thought I'd just give this a try and lo and behold, mm -hmm. you know, it's like the, with the, the thing is always the last place you look. <laughs> it's, it's true though. But, um, but I think, again, it goes back to this idea that we're addressing the entire body and not only the body, but your entire life. You know, we're looking at what is your sleep cycle like? What is um, your daily routine like? How is your job and the stress related to your work contributing to your overall well-being well, well or lack thereof? Um, you know, what are uh, even things like um, feng shui, that's um, the idea that um, you know, regulating and, and clearing and balancing your home or work environments can contribute to wellness in your body. So we'll talk about, you know, removing clutter from your home and things like that. So it's really pervasive into all areas of your life, not just meant to have the 30 minute treatment and then off you're on, you're on your way. There is a lot of work involved in terms of uh, how can we, you know, find this balance throughout every area of your life. Okay, 
Wow, that is some great information. So I do want to um, just kind of interject here that in a few minutes, we will open uh, the chat for questions. Um, you ought to see an option attendees where you can type a question. I'm gonna send a little test message here. We are um, for questions. Um, please start sending those through. We'll try to answer uh, a few of those, but you know we don't have a, a ton of time tonight. But so I wanted to let you all know that the floor will be open for questions shortly. So you can start sending them along and I will ask Christine in the order that we get them. But Christine, I do also want to know um, what are some of the questions that families who are thinking about acu acupuncture, they've, they've tried all these other things. You know, we get really creative when we've kind of reached um, what we think is the end of our rope and we, we start trying different things. Um, what questions should they specifically be asking about um, acupuncture or uh, what might make them ideal candidates for, the, for uh, this treatment? Excellent question. Um, you know, I, I, I like to say like just about everybody is a good candidate. Um, there's there's even people who are generally very healthy can benefit from acupuncture. Um, you know, I for people who are um, just looking for overall wellness and maybe not on a fertility specific journey, I might say come four times a year, come at the seasonal change. That's a really good time to just get a little tune up, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, and you know so that's my that's that's the perfect situation for me where we we don't need to do a lot of intervention mm -hmm. um but i i also am so welcoming and and so used to working with people who who really have complicated situations you know where they've we've, they've really gotten to a point where there are so many things going on and so maybe fertility is part of that but they may also have autoimmune stuff or mm -hmm. thyroid stuff or um you know weight issues or you name it and so those can all affect right fertility overall and so yeah there's, i mean outside of emergency situations there's really very little that i can't treat um, but it just sometimes takes more time. You know, if you have, it's taken you 15 years to get to this point, you know, um, in terms of not being balanced, maybe it'll take some time to undo that. I wouldn't expect someone, you know, who's been, let's say, had a PCOS diagnosis for 15 years, I wouldn't expect them to all of a sudden not have that diagnosis in one month, you know? And so we'll talk about things that they can do to help to find that balance. but. Um, I, I, I want people to know that um, this is work, you know, that, that we, we really, it's a, it's a partnership and we're a team working on this together um, to help you find this balance and this wellness that, um, you know, it, it's, it's more lasting and more, um, uh, uh, there's more strength in that experience you know, rather mm -hmm. than just turning off a switch, you know, <laughs> and um, like, a, you know, it's it's so great that we have Advil to, to get rid of headaches, right? But if those headaches are happening every day or every week or every menstrual cycle, there's something that your body's trying to tell you and you're not addressing it by just turning it off. We need to find that balance and try to find that reason and that underground roots reason why this issue is occurring. And that can take some time. Definitely. Okay. Well, we've got some questions rolling in here, um, and I am just going to to dive right in. And we've got several questions, so um, we will try to to get to everyone. Uh, the first one that I have is: What is the medical evidence behind the success rates with IVF? Sure. Great. Um, so there, like I say, there are a bunch of um, studies out there. Uh, not all of them have been done um, in the uh, in the United States, and so some of them, as I say, are not embraced by the Western medical community. There's a wonderful researcher by the name of Lee Hollander Rubin, um, H U L L E N D E R R U B I N is her last name, and um, she is one of the she's she's very young, but she's really um, pulled together a lot of data about um, specifically how um, acupuncture affects uh, embryo transfers and and or with IVF, 
And so I can send you the link to the article. There's um, on uh, uh, the NIH website, there's some information, or if you look at PubMed, there's information on there. But again, I've seen ranges all over the place where, um, but the, almost none of them are, are that there was no impact. You know, like that, that always the, the bump up is like 10 to 40%, depending on which study wow. they're looking at. And so my feeling is, let's just give it a try you know if you get right, that like right. you know if you're because if your chances are 10 percent, what if it went up to 20 percent? what if it went up to 40 right. 50 percent? that could be significant for somebody and again it's not just we're not just my and in fact people are sort of surprised when i say this but my job is not to get people pregnant my job is to create wellness so that their bodies can become pregnant right so it's wow. it's a, just a different frame of re, of reference i'm not you know, trying, I'm not in the room when they're having intercourse. I'm not in the room when they're having their transfer. Well, most of the time, sometimes I am. Um, for the transfer, not the other part. Um, right. but, they, uh, <laughs> but, um, but, but my goal is to, you know, like I say, with the woman and with the man, ideally, we're creating that balance so that their bodies can naturally function well and that she um, and, and blood uh, that are circulating properly so that um, this natural function can occur. Definitely. Great, great. Um, another question, is acupuncture covered by insurance? Excellent question. Um, many times it is. You should check with your insurance provider. We do not bill insurance directly. There are some uh, acupuncturists who do, but most don't. Um, they're, the insurance rates are notoriously low when um, we're in network, and so um, we often just, I mean, most acupuncturists don't do it. So, um, but what we do provide is, a, it's called a super bill, and it just has a form, it's a form that has all the data that the insurance company would need, the procedural code, um, you know, what the, um, what we used it for and that sort of thing, and all the dates and how much you paid and so forth. It's one extra step, but I almost all of my clients use it and then mm -hmm. they get, you know, whatever reimbursement rate their insurance provider gives. And so ultimately it's a consumer driven industry. And so mm -hmm. um, if you ask for it, eventually it is going to get covered. And, and remember January, for, January 1st, every year, um, you know, the insurance companies come out with their new rates and every year, when I first started doing this 15 years ago, very few companies were covering it. Now almost all of them are. So it's okay. absolutely worth looking into. Um, uh, pulling down the moon also offers package rates. So most people end up, as I mentioned, doing multiple sessions. And um, to cut down on costs, we also offer those packages. Um, and then lastly, you can often, almost always, you can use um, an HSA account. So if you have one of those, the flex spending account, you can use um, that money towards it. And those cards usually go through no problem. Definitely. Great information. Great information. Okay, moving on. Um, once pregnant, is acupuncture something that needs to be continued? Also a great question. Um, you know, after um, uh, an assisted cycle, like with an IUI or an IVF, I do recommend weekly treatment once a week um, during the first trimester of pregnancy. After that, we recommend once per month. Um, and then maybe you come in like once a week, three to four weeks prior to your estimated due date because acupuncture has been associated with uh, shorter labor times, less intense pain, things like that. Wow. Um, so particularly for people who are attempting um, an unmedicated birth, it is a great choice. Um, can be used safely all the way through pregnancy. Um, so if you needed to come more frequently for things like heartburn or morning sickness, you know, pain of any kind, um, headaches, even emotional wellness. Um, that is something that we can absolutely do safely um, all the way through pregnancy. If you're having a healthy pregnancy, um, particularly you've had no issues with sustaining pregnancy, um, then it's, uh, you know, maybe you come for the first couple of weeks and then if you're feeling okay, you don't necessarily have to come every week, you know, so it just really depends on the picture. But again, I generally recommend more involvement for people who have gone through assisted cycles. Okay. All right. Wow. That, that is really good information to know, I think, just for everyone. All right. Fantastic. So, and we're going to keep going here. Y'all have some really great questions and they are still coming. Okay. Um, 
so this one is is similarly similar, I guess, to the question before. Is acupuncture good for postpartum care? Oh, wonderful! Yeah. Um, well, first of all, my biggest challenge has been, you know, can you find childcare? So that that's always hard for people. But if you have family around or friends who are willing to watch the baby while you come over, um, absolutely, is very very helpful. There's a tradition in China. Of, you might have heard of it before, like the I think they call it like a hundred days. Um, so for mm -hmm. the first hundred days, you're not supposed to leave the house or even that room that we're being cared for. Now, our lives are not conducive to that. But um, the, as much as self care as you can do can be so critical, not just for that immediate postpartum period, but even for years afterwards. So many women struggle with things like, um, you know, postural issues and pain, pelvic pain and pelvic issues. Um, and emotional um, upset and postpartum depression and anxiety and things like that, that's absolutely something we can treat. Another issue that's almost across the board very easily resolved, I'm always amazed by how, how rapid most people respond to it, is um, insufficient lactation. So, um, mm. you know, most of us have never seen breastfeeding or really not I mean, we all might have seen it before, maybe under a cover or something like that, but we didn't really right. know exactly what that relationship was like until we started breastfeeding ourselves. And so that is something that, um, you know, I, I'm not a lactation consultant. I would absolutely f refer to someone for that portion. But if there's not enough milk coming out, acupuncture can be really helpful with, with that. So yes, absolutely safe and effective all the way through the postpartum period as well. Definitely. This is such great information um, just for for those uh, trying to conceive, for those expecting, um, you know, for postpartum moms. This is just really, really amazing information. I'm just so excited to hear all of this great stuff that I will definitely be sharing. Okay, so moving on in my excitement, um, would you recommend an acupuncture session on the day of frozen embryo transfer? Excellent question. So a lot of the studies that are out there have been uh, focused exclusively on this day. So there's one that was done by um, a guy by the last name of Paulus, P-A-U-L-U-S, um, okay. in, in Germany in 2001. Um, and they only were looking at the pre and post transfer treatments. And there's a, a protocol which we still use, um, and at least to some extent at pulling down the moon, because it is an effective protocol, I feel, showed double the success rates of a frozen embryo transfer. Wow. That study has been repeated, and they weren't ever able, so it was a small study. I can't remember exactly the sample size that they used, but it was, it was, a, it was a pretty small, like a, under 100 patients, I want to say. Um, and they haven't really been able to repeat exactly that study. But here's what I found out is that most of the patients that were in that study were already receiving regular acupuncture treatment. As gotcha. in, this wasn't their first time coming for acupuncture with that pre and post transfer. It was in China, or I'm sorry, not in China, Germany. Um, mm -hmm. But so, like, this was, um, this is something that I think is really significant to point out. I do have a fair number of patients who will come only for their pre and post transfer because they've seen that setting. And they're like, oh, well, that's all I need to do. But as right. I mentioned earlier, we're really not, this isn't a quick fix. This isn't something, this is a therapy, you know? So it takes time to do its magic. And so if that's all you can do, absolutely, there, do it. It's still gonna be effective for reducing stress the day of. So I absolutely do recommend coming within 24 hours before and after the IVF transfer. But if you can come for a little more regularly beforehand, that would be a much better situation because again, then we find that balance and that rhythm and create that wellness within your body ahead of time to give you the best possible outcome. Definitely. All right. And I am trying to summarize these answers as we get them and, and send them uh, through to the questions. So that's why it's taking me a little bit um, a little bit longer, but I'm going to keep going if my, uh, if my mouse will scroll down here, but technology. Okay, here we are. Um, so this question says, you mentioned COQ10 and zinc. Yes. Any other supplements uh, that are recommended to take along with acupuncture? 
Um, yes, 100% there are, I, but I'm reluctant to prescribe anything without meeting someone first. Um, so I will say that I've probably pretty much everybody, we can go, you know, a good prenatal. We have a couple of really great ones at Pulling Down the Moon um, that are actually in packets that include things like CoQ10 and, um, uh, you know, omegas, the fatty acids, essential fatty acids, DHA, EPA. Um, mm -hmm. Those are really significant. Um, I would recommend considering a nutritional evaluation and consultation. Um, with Robin at Pulling Down the Moon. Um, okay. She's absolutely wonderful and can go through all of these supplements and your entire diet and things that might be contributing to fertility, um, but also health and wellness overall. You know, so if there's issues with weight or, um, you know, other thing, other metabolic issues like uh, thyroid stuff or endocrine function, what have you, she can go through all of that with you and recommend specific supplements. So, but in general, without having met someone, I would say like, you know, a good prenatal, um, make sure that there is DHA and EPA in there. Um, those are those essential fatty acids. Consider a CoQ10 because um, it, I saw this amazing, um, it was at the um, uh, Reproductive um, Medicine sum Summit that happens every year here in Chicago, and um, they showed an image, I'm sorry, real quick, it's just so fascinating to me, of a, um, a healthy mouse ovary, okay, young mouse, what might be the equivalent of like a 20-year-old uh, human. And then they showed um, an, an elderly one might be maybe be the equivalent of like a 45, 50 year old uh, female human. Um, and and the, the young one looked like a light pink fluffy cloud. And then the older one looked like a little smaller and darker color. It's obviously mm -hmm. different, right? Then they mm -hmm. gave CoQ10, what might be the equivalent of about 600 milligrams a day um, to that mouse. And it went right back to looking like a healthy ovary. They believe wow. that it works on the mitochondria in the cell so that it can, it's actually great for heart function and um, can help with um, ovarian function, can also help with sperm, um, help creating healthy sperm. Men don't need to take as much. Again, all something they should go over with a nutritionist, dietitian, but um, it, a very effective supplement, CoQ10. Um, so th those are kind of the big ones, and, and certainly, you know, any prenatal, or if you're not doing a whole prenatal, um, a folate, methylated folate is ideal, um, rather than folic acid. Folic acid and folate are very similar molecularly, but folic acid is a synthetic version of folate, and folate is often much more uh, easily assimilated by the body, is more recognized, particularly for people with autoimmune issues or if there's genetic issues. Okay. Definitely. Um, we had another question about insurance, but I think we addressed that already. Um, okay. And uh, oh, wow, we are over time and we've got we've got three more questions. We're going to go ahead and close sure. in our questions, but we got three more that we're going to go ahead and try to answer. Um, so this question says, I have had acupuncture in the past and they gave me a health questionnaire. However, they were not as detailed as you described. How do I find a quality acupuncturist in my area? And it looks like she's in a PA. Great. Um, okay. So that is as holistic and detail oriented, specializing in fertility. Great question. Um, so first off, you know, asking friends and family, Yelp, things like that. I absolutely think I believe in getting referrals from people that you know have had good experiences. Um, but secondly, we want to make sure that it's somebody who is qualified. So I am a licensed acupuncturist. That's the designation in Illinois. In many states, it's going to be similar, but it may, I'm not sure what it is in Pennsylvania, but it's going to be something similar to that. So it's either uh, acupuncture physician, doctor of acupuncture, um, you know, or licensed acupuncturist is the most common. Um, there are other practitioners out there who practice acupuncture or some form of acupuncture, but who may not have the training in traditional Chinese medicine. Um, so that's the other thing I would look for is somebody who's trained in this medicine um, and has a degree in this medicine. Definitely. Um, and then, you know, um, you might want to look for somebody who has fertility on their website, you know, rather than just being like somewhere on their list of things they treat somewhere higher up. There aren't that many people who focus exclusively on fertility, which is partly what makes pulling down the moon so, you, so unique. Mm -hmm. um, 
And so, but they, but you know, again, like look for somebody who has this background in traditional Chinese medicine. And even if that's not all they treat, they may be very um, talented in, in treating it because again, it is something that is part of our training pretty much across the board, no matter what school you go to, it is part of it, women's health in particular, um, but fertility in general. Definitely. Great, great there's advice. One, one other thing, there's um, there's just two websites that you can also check. I'm sorry, acufinder.com is a c u f i n d e r dot com. Um, you can put in your zip code and it'll tell you everyone in your area. The, yeah. That is a paid website, and so I noticed that not everybody, like I don't even list on there anymore, but I used to when I first started out. Um, so that's one option. I think and I might have lost. One, you. Okay, oh, you, went, you went out just a little bit. Oh. You're back now, but I. Um, I think so you said and, um, okay. there's another one at nccaom.org. That's the uh, the governing body for um, license or not licensure, but certification in acupuncture and Chinese medicine um, for our entire country. So nccaom, oh, sorry, nccaom.org, yes. um, and you can put in your zip code and it'll tell you people in your area. Okay, perfect. Okay. Awesome. Um, so, and along with acupuncture, do you recommend yoga and or massage or is it contraindicated? Brilliant question. Um, those are two services that we also offer at Pulling Down the Moon. We do fertility enhancing massage. It was designed by our massage director, Meredith Nathan. It's um, unique. There's nobody else doing something like this. And um, there are other, um, there's the Mayan abdominal massage, um, there's a couple of others out there that are helpful for improving circulation throughout the pelvis, but really what we do is systemic. It's relaxing, it's a massage, but it is therapeutic in nature, and there are different um, uh, massages for the different phases of the cycle. Um, it's safe and effective to be used prior to ovulation. After yeah. ovulation, after there's a chance that you might be pregnant, you need to be very careful with anybody that puts their hands on you. We have a massage that we call unwind the minds that is uh, that is safe to be used through that two week wait and throughout the first trimester. But most massage is contraindicated during the first trimester. So you have to be very careful, um, even with things like, you know, getting your nails done or um, wow. you know, if you're getting a foot massage or something like that. You really need to make sure that anybody that puts their hands on you knows there's a chance you might be pregnant because it could, you know, they could be doing something that's not safe. Um, and yoga. Um, we also offer yoga for fertility at Pulling Down the Moon. We also have cocoon care, which is housed within Pulling Down the Moon, which is um, for prenatal and postpartum exercise, wellness, and yoga. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, all of these things are safe when used appropriately. Um, it's a little too much to get into in depth right now, but there are safe things you can use, I would say, with yoga. Just a general guideline is you can do regular yoga um, throughout the first trimester of pregnancy. After that, mm -hmm. you probably want to switch to prenatal yoga. Um, mm -hmm. And But even during that time while trying to conceive or if there's a chance you might be pregnant and during the first trimester, you would not want to do any inversions or deep twists because those mm -hmm. could be problematic for a pregnancy. Okay, no inversions or deep twists. Um, while trying to conceive, okay, while well, TTC, okay. Wow, that is some really, really great information. Okay, and finally, this is the last question we will be able to get to tonight. Um, this has been absolutely, absolutely amazing. Um, and hold on, let me see if I can actually get to the last question. Once again, technology, okay, here we go. Um, and this is a good one. I have had my third acupuncture session tomorrow. Or oh, wait, okay, let me let me rephrase that. I have my third acupuncture session tomorrow in my local area. This does feel like my last resort. How will I start to know if the sessions are working or not? Wonderful question. Um, yeah, everybody's a little bit different, so it's hard to say. You know, how long it's going to take before you notice a change, and with something like fertility, if you're overall very healthy, you may not see a lot of changes initially. Mm -hmm. um, if there are things going on like pain, you know, even if it's neck pain or back aches, or maybe there's stress and anxiety, 
um, I would expect those things to gradually improve. Sometimes people see dramatic results after one session. I've had people quit smoking in one session. I've had people get pregnant in one month. I've had, you know, all these things happen very quickly, but most people, it takes time. You know, again, it took you time to get to this place in life, and so it may take some time to resolve any given issue. And so um, I would say within four to six sessions, you will have noticed some sort of a change. Maybe it's better sleep. Maybe it's more energy. Maybe your bowels are more regulated where they weren't before. Maybe your periods are a little bit easier. Um, you should notice some kind of a shift. It doesn't mean we're out of the woods and that everything is perfect, but you should notice a shift. And let your practitioner know if um, you're not seeing a shift and ask them what they would expect you to see given your range, excuse me, and uh, of issues and what, and what they're seeing and what's going on. They may think, see things in your tongue and in your pulse and in your overall countenance that maybe you haven't recognized. Definitely, definitely. Well, thank you so much for your time tonight, Christine. I feel like we have um, learned so much. I know that I have, and this is why I really love doing these webinars with Fertility for Color Girls. So I would like to thank you and uh, Pulling Down the Moon for being such an amazing partner uh, with Fertility for Color Girls and for sharing your knowledge about um, acupuncture. And tell all of our guests tonight where they can find more information and where they can and how they can contact Pulling Down the Moon. Thank you so much. We are at www.pullingdownthemoon.com or you can also call our phone number 312-321-0004. I'll throw my email out there in case anybody has specific questions for me. It's Christine, C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N-E at pullingdownthemoon.com. And thank you so, so much for having me. This has been so fun. I'm so happy to answer these questions and so happy to support your beautiful organization. Well, thank you so much. You are you are so welcome. You are, you are welcome back anytime. Uh, we're gonna you. work on uh, getting the recording to everyone. And of course, in the meantime, you can visit fertilityforcolorgirls.org or visit the um, Facebook page and we're on Instagram uh, just doing uh, our part to accompany all the women and families who are on this journey trying to conceive. So thank you all for joining us tonight. Y'all have a wonderful night. Good night. Good night.